Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavul. In this tutorial we're going to be making some rope in Blender. So as you can see here I've been working on some more shoulder pads. We did make some shoulder pads in an older tutorial and I've got a link to that in the top right hand corner if you want to check that out. And I've got another one where we talked about how to put things like these different studs onto these shoulder pads really efficiently. Again, top right hand corner for a tutorial on that. But what if we want to do something else? What if I want some sort of rope added to these and I want this to flow in a relatively realistic way? Well, Blender actually makes that relatively easy. So let's start with making the rope and then we'll move on from there. So all I'm going to do is press Shift and A and I'm going to bring it in a mesh circle. And I'm going to up the vertex on that. So I'm going to go with something like 64. This is going to be relatively small, but I do want it being smooth. And I'm just going to go into the Z axis and I'm going to move this over just so it's near the shoulder pad that I'm going to be working on, which is this one. Now, first thing to do is to actually make the cross section of our rope. And that's going to depend on what you want this to look like and how dense you want the fibers of the rope. Now, a lot of that's going to depend on the scale of what you're doing. Generally, I'd advise somewhere between three or four strands if you want this to be notably visible as rope for 3D printing. If you're doing this for CG work, you might do something that's greater than this, but that's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to shift and D. So I've got two of these. And if you want to do this just quick, I'll just go into vertex mode so we're inside the object and I'll just shift and D and make myself, let's say, three copies of that. Now, the other way we could do this is to use an array and I have done a video on using an array. There's a link in the top right hand corner, but because I've got hard ops, I'm going to use the quicker version of this and I just want to have three. So I'm just going to go something like that. And then I'm just going to apply all so that's done. Because of that, I can delete this little bit out, which is used by hard ops to create this. And then I can go into vertex mode and we need to start deleting these vertices that are in the middle. We don't want those ones overlapping. So let's get rid of that, 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 and that. So delete and vertices. And then these two here, I'm just going to press M to merge them at the center. And we're going to do the same here and here. And this gives us now one connected series of vertices and edges, and we can start using this to make our rope. Now, if you're gonna do this the standard way without using an array or using hard op, then there's no problem with that. You're just gonna follow exactly the same process of deleting out the central vertices and then merging the vertices that you want to connect together. The only additional thing you need to do here is make sure that you've got the origin in the center of the object. Now, if you've got machine tools, you've got a pie menu for that. You just press Shift and S. Otherwise, just come to the object menu, set origins and origin to geometry, and that will centralize it or put it as close to center as possible. So let's get back to this more perfect version and let's see how we're gonna turn this into rope. And this is actually really easy with a modifier. It is just called the screw modifier and well, it doesn't look very good at this point, but that's because we've got a lot of vertices and faces overlapping each other. What we've got on the right hand side is the angle, which means well, at this point it's going 360 degrees round. We want that. It's got the screw height, which at the moment is zero and it's got a number of iterations. So we're gonna to want to up this height until we get something that looks a little bit more rope-like. That looks pretty good to me. In fact, I'm just gonna type that in eight, so it's a nice exact number. And if we want this to look a little bit smoother, and notice, again, this is gonna be 28 millimeters in size, that's probably not too bad. I can always up these numbers of steps. So I might up these to 32. I'll do that in the render as well, not that I'm gonna use it. And we do want to click merge so that when we've got things that overlap each other, they're going to merge together. And you'll see why we're going to get that. And that's because if I come here to the iterations, when I click that up, it makes another version of this screw on top of each other. In effect, this is really, really similar to an array, except for it's just carrying on this screw so that it's nice and uniform and continues on. And if you know the array modifier, that has a similar merge function. So at this point, I'm gonna to want to scale this rope so it's about the right size, probably something around there. I'm gonna have this a little bit exaggerated so we can again see the strands. Let's go for that for now, and then we're gonna talk through what we're gonna do next. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in a curve, and we're gonna have this rope flow along this curve so we can modify it. Obviously, if you just wanted a straight rope, you can just do that as long as you want but I would recommend you using a curve modifier to flex this around as opposed to something like proportional editing. It generally does it a lot better doing it this way. There are a couple of tricks to it. Now, the first and most important trick for this is that you want to have the origin of both the object, which is here, 
and the curve that we're going to make in the same place. Otherwise, it's not going to work and you're going to get loads of errors. It's the most common mistake. So what we want is the origin somewhere easy to find. So at the moment, this is going to be the shoulder of the pad that I'm doing it on. I've got that origin there. So I'm actually just going to have the origin of my object being there as well. So first thing I want to do is move my cursor here. If you have machine tools, you could just press Shift and S and then move it to selected, which is really helpful. Machine Tools is free, and the last tutorial was on it, so do feel free to check that out. Again, link in the top right-hand corner. Otherwise, you can just go to Object, Snap, and then we want Cursor to Selected, and then when I press Shift and A and bring in a Bezier curve, you'll notice that its origin has gone to the same place. Now, so we don't move the origin, I'm gonna go straight into Edit Mode, and I'm just gonna press G to move this around, and then we're gonna start moving these points on the curve. So what I want is something looping from one side of the shoulder pad to the other. And then I'm just gonna click here and then let's move that round somewhere around there. Let's move that around somewhere around there. And let's start moving these bits out. Something like that. We can just start playing around with this until we get something that we're happy with. Okay, so now we've got our rope in the right place, or our curve that's gonna make our rope. We're gonna fiddle around with this a little bit more in a second. And then I'm gonna to go to this one, and then let's make this rope a little bit longer, something like there, so it's dangling down. Let's move that one up, and then I'm gonna do a similar thing down there. We'll see how this goes when we get the rope attached to it. So let's go back into object mode, and I'm gonna attach this to the rope, but, We've got to do the most important thing. We need the origin of this in the same location as the origin of that one. So all I'm going to do is come here again with machine tools. It's just shift and S and then two cursor offset, or we can go to object snap and selection to cursor. So once I've got that, select my object, let's minimize that screw modifier. And we're going to add in a curve modifier. And I'm just going to select that Bezier curve. And well, this looks awful. Don't worry, it's because the deform axis is not set to Z. And as soon as we do that, we've got that looking right. And I can just come in here and up my iterations until this travels along. Now at this point, this is looking a little bit lopsided. So let's go in and edit this. Now, one thing, this does start making it difficult. We can go Shift and Z and try and find this curve there. I normally just do this from the outliner up here. So I just click on the curve edit mode and then we can see everything nice and clearly and let's start moving this around so that it looks a little bit better and effectively just get this to the point where you're happy with it and it's the way you want it to be now i would say one thing that i do try to make sure i do is that i actually keep this so that it does overlap with the shoulder pad itself you can see that here that's quite important because it means that you're going to end up with something that's going to be connected. It stops it being quite weak and potentially breaking when you're 3D printing it. So again, I'm doing the same thing here. And the same with these dangly bits. I want these so that they're going to be slightly touching. So it's going to be as strong as possible. I might even have one longer than the other. It's entirely fine. Now do notice if I go back to this, you can keep changing your iterations, but the one thing you can't do, if I try to, let's say, do 11.5, is you can't do half iterations. You can only do whole iterations, but you can always just press S and start scaling things up and down. Notice that will make it thinner as well. So actually, I quite like that. The other thing you can do is you can change the screw length a little bit, and this does change a little bit how tightly it looks wound, but you do have enough control to be able to deal with that. Okay, so let's start dealing with some problems. The biggest problem is what we can see here. This pinching is gonna cause a lot of problems when you come to 3D print. So if I go back to my Bezier curve and edit mode, that is being caused by this really tight turnaround here. So if I isolate this, there's easy ways to deal with this. Generally, we can just bring in another vertex here. So if I'm in the pen mode and press control and click, I can do that and start moving that around and make this flow a little bit better. And then when I come out of isolated mode, you'll see that this has got rid of a lot of that pinching. So that's gonna solve that problem. And it does make the rope look a little bit more natural. So let's do the same thing over here. Isolated mode, I'm gonna press control and click 
and then move that around and fiddle with the handles of this one. There we go. And that looks much better. There's still a little bit of overlap here. So let's maybe move that around. And as you see, this is just a little bit of trial and error as you sort of move different bits or different vertices around and the handles, try and get something so you don't have this pinching. Now you can leave the pinching, but that is gonna cause a load of problems when you start combining this together into one mesh and you're gonna find a lot of errors. So it's really worth spending a little bit of time now to sort that out. And generally you'll find eventually a relatively simple solution. In fact, if I get rid of that one, that solved that problem. It's just a matter of getting used to it and knowing what Blender likes. So that should cause a lot less problems here. We haven't got that pinching. And let's just come back in here and make sure that this is still connected a little bit more to the shoulder pad so that when it prints, it's connected and we're not gonna have any problems. Check for pinching. And this one could possibly come out a little bit more. There we go. So pretty happy with our rope. And if we do want to do something like, for example, here, we've got a little bit of movement. We could always add a little bit more in there. Maybe bring that out. So that there's some movement here for when this person, well, for when this miniature is maybe in a running pose or something like that. So really nice. Now from this point, there are a few other bits that we're gonna to have to deal with. The biggest one is that this is not a manifold object. So here's why, have a look at those ends. So before we do anything with this, we're gonna probably want to save it because we're gonna to have to start going relatively destructive at this point to be able to fix this. So back into object mode, file, and then save. So what I need to do is click on this and all I'm gonna do is press convert to and mesh. And now we've got our mesh. And at this point, I can go into edge mode, come to the bottom here, Alt select that edge and press F to fill it. This is gonna look a little bit awful because if I go to object mode, it's currently in shade smooth. Let's go to shade flat, don't like shade smooth. It hides problems for 3D printing. And then let's do the same thing here and F. So now this will be a manifold object. And do remember that we had set that our vertices were gonna merge here. From this point, I'm just gonna add some additional details to this shoulder pad and things to make this rope more believable. For example, I'm gonna add some connection points or things that would be loops for the rope to be put through. Obviously, you could do something different here. You could do it maybe like as a pin or something smaller. I will say, if you're gonna do this, I would really suggest using a cylinder, not using something like a torus. If you were doing this for CG work, you'd do a torus because then they can see that there's got a curve to it. But at this point, for 3D printing, this is gonna be so small that really people aren't gonna be able to make that out. You're gonna create a lot of geometry issues creating a torus. It's gonna to probably have difficulties putting this together when you try to Boolean them. And once you just bevel the edges of this cylinder, it's gonna look like it's a rounded object and people's imagination will do the work for you when it's at such a tiny scale. So really a torus wouldn't be the best thing to use here unless you were doing this for CG work, not for 3D printing. I'm also gonna add the tassels at the end here. There are a lot of ways you could do this. And again, for CG work, you probably wouldn't sculpt it this way. You'd use something like a hair particle system, which would make something a lot more perfect. And if you had to move it around, it would flow. But for 3D design work, again, merging those together is gonna to be an absolute pain because it effectively creates lots and lots of different strings. So sculpting this, just using the standard sculpting techniques is probably the easiest way to go. And if you haven't done any sculpting before, I've got a couple of videos on that where I'm making some sort of possessed details that I'm adding to some models. So if you want to have a look at that, there's a video link in the top right hand corner and hopefully you'll find that interesting if you haven't done much sculpting before. As always, I hope you found this video useful. If you're new to the channel, please do hit subscribe so that you're aware of when other videos get posted up. And if you've got any questions or any ways you'd do this differently, please do feel free to put them in the comment section. I really like having that sort of chat with you guys. It's really nice to get talking to people and know what people are working on.